Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to do integration by parts illustrated with a specific example, simple example done very explicitly. And, uh, and the example is this, x times cosine x dx. So to begin with integration by part, the first step which I've already written because it's too obvious to even spend time on is, is that you're identify what the factors are, which in this case is pretty easy. The factors are x and cosine x. So that's however not enough to get started with integration by parts. You have to decide among these two factors which is the part to differentiate and which is the part to integrate. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's zoom here. Well, let's go down to the formula. Down here, formula. Yes. Okay, so, so we have it in these two forms. I'll explain both. Let's say you're trying to integrate this product. Now, what, what integration by parts tells you is that the integral of this product is, is capital F times capital G minus integral little f capital G, where capital G is an antiderivative for little g and little f is the derivative of capital F. But in order to apply the formula, you have to decide of the two factors, which one do you take as capital F and which one do you take as little g. The little g piece is the one you integrate. Right? The one you integrate here and the one whose integral you write here. The capital F is the part you differentiate because in the new integral, you've got the derivative of it. If you want to use a UV notation, you have the UV notation. What, what you have to decide is of the two parts which you are multiplying, which part is the, is the part U, which we are ultimately going to differentiate. And which is the part V, or which is the part DV dx, which we are ultimately going to integrate to get v. Okay, so you have to decide which of the parts is u and which is dv dx, or in this notation, which of the parts is capital F, the part to differentiate, and which is the part to integrate. Now, since we um, haven't yet covered the heuristic to decide what to differentiate in here, I'll just tell you the answer is that we differentiate x and integrate cosine x. There's actually a general strategy to figure out how to decide which to differentiate, which to integrate. But we haven't yet seen that. So, so this you just accept um, is my wisdom. In other words, in the FG notation, get down here, this notation, capital F is the part to differentiate, little g is the part to integrate. So move back up here, capital F of X is what? The part to differentiate X little g of x is the part to integrate, that's cosine x. cosine x. Okay, or in the, if you want to use the uv notation, then if you want to use the uv notation, then let's write it here, u, so down here, the uv notation, down here, okay, u is x, x and what's cosine x? dv dx, dv dx, not v. Be careful. So dv dx is cosine x. Okay. Now let's come to step three. Is step three is to find the derivative and antiderivative. So find the derivative of the part you want to differentiate and find the antiderivative of the part you want to integrate. By the way, I'm doing everything in both the function and the variable notation. You can just use either notation in an actual example. Okay, so what's the derivative of capital F? Capital F prime, let's go down here to the formula. Capital F prime is what we call little f. So, and and that's one thing we have to find. The other thing we have to find is, is capital G, which is the antiderivative, which is an antiderivative for little g. So little fx, which is just the derivative of capital F, what's that? 1. 1. And capital GX, which is the antiderivative for the part you're integrating, the antiderivative for cosine, what's that? Sine. Sine x. Uh, we have a uh, formula here, you know, up here. We have all the formulas here. Yeah. Okay. So the integral of cosine is sine. Okay. If you want to write it in the uv notation, then that's just saying du dx is 1 and v is sin x. So a little aside here, instead of sin x for the antiderivative, I could have picked 50 plus sin x. Would that have been wrong? No. No? 
would that have made any difference to my to my final answer? No, it doesn't actually matter which antiderivative you pick. You just should pick any one, and I just pick sine x because it's the simplest choice. I could have picked fifty plus sine x, but fifty being a constant. Okay. So. Okay, good. So now we move to the next step, which is you plug in the formula. So apply the formula. Okay, so now we have everything done, and we can just use the formula. So what do we get? So we get integral x cosine x dx. And we need to be careful here. So let's go down here. Zoom out. So it's capital F times capital G. Or in this notation, it's u times p. So it's the product of both the anti-differentiated ones in some sense. So it's capital F times capital G. So it's x times sine x. Or if you using uv notation, it's x times sine x. So x times sine x, go down here, minus this integral, or minus this integral. So minus the integral of the derivative of it, so little f. So minus the integral of 1 times this piece, the anti-differentiated piece, the g piece, the p piece, sine x. So what's the idea? You're, you're trying to integrate this. It's the product of both the anti-differentiated pieces. So it's the product of this piece times the anti for this minus the integral of a new thing where this piece has been differentiated and this piece has been integrated. Okay. So what's the next step you have to do? Do a further integration. So do the second integration. Mm -hmm. So, just continuing here. X sine x minus, so this is the integration we have to do. Now, we have the formulas here, up here, here. So, integral of sine is negative cosine. So, and now once you have no integral signs, you should put a plus c. On your expression. So now if you want to simplify, what does that become? x sine x plus, plus cosine x plus c. So that's your answer. Now if you want, you can check that this answer is correct by differentiating it. What should you get as the derivative of this? If you got if you did this calculation correct, what should the derivative of this be? x times cosine x. x times cosine x, the original thing you're trying to integrate. Thank you. What would happen if you try to integrate it? What kind of rule do you expect? Let me just write down step 6. I won't do the details of this. But what would happen if you were to do that? What kind of rule would you use to simplify that differentiation? Product rule. The product rule for differentiation. Let's just do this mentally. So, dead with x sine x, you'll get 1 times sine x plus x times cosine x. Plus yes. minus sine x. The minus sine x coming from here will cancel the one sine x coming from here, and you'll just be left with x cosine x. And that's how most verifications of integration by parts go. You apply product rules to each of the terms, and one term in this product rule will cancel with the next one, one term in this product rule will cancel with the next one, and so on. And you'll be left finally with just the thing you started to integrate. Okay. 